Yes, praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. So good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. It is. Feels good outside. Nice little rain. Thank Smells good coming in. I thank the Lord for the rain. Amen. Amen. I asked the Lord the other day, oh Lord, we need some moisture. Our, our grass is burning up. Our flowers are burning up. I can just keep putting water and water on it still, you know. Still burning up. It's nothing wow. like the rain. Uh, plants and flowers and gardens just love the rain. Yes, they do. Amen. God always knew how to just moisten our land and yeah. let it grow. And Hallelujah. isn't that wonderful? How, how God just takes care of everything right. and, and everything. Every little bug has a purpose. <laughs> right. Everything. Uh, you know. Yes. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe that. So awesome to be in the house of the Lord and thinking of that song we used to sing that it, uh, it's amazing what praising right. can do. Right. And I so love to praise my Lord, don't you? Amen. Love to praise his name and lift him up, and give him glory, give him honor. We enter into his house, into his gates of thanksgiving, his court of praise. Right. We can put off all these garments of heaviness and uh -huh. put on the garments of praise. And I was thinking, well, what about them garments of heaviness? And uh, I got to thinking about going to work all day. Right. Feeling all sweaty, feeling dirty, and, and, and I actually felt heavy. Right. And got home, oh, I was tired, I felt heavy. Right. And you know, I just take off them garments and get in the shower and and then get out and get my PJs on. And, right. and, and oh, I felt so much lighter. I felt right. so good. You know, and I thought about, oh, those garments of, of sin. Right. Garments of displeasure. Right. Garments of, of, of heaviness of this world. Right. You know, I, I just want to just, just put them off. Right, amen. Take it off. And then just put on garments of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's amazing what praise will do. Amen. Let's do that right now. Amen. Let's just lift our hands. And can we do that in, the, in this service this morning? I'm so glad to have each and every one of you here. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we want to put off those garments off of heaviness. And we're lifting you up, God, with our hands in and, and praise and glory and honor to our King of kings and our Lord of lords. Prince of all peace, everlasting Father. Thank you, Jesus, that you are our everything. You are our Savior. You're our healer. Hallelujah. This morning, Jesus, we give you praise and, and we give you glory. We just want to lift you up today, God. Giving you all the praise and the glory. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And give you thanks. So we enter into thy gates, God, this morning with praise. We enter into thy courts with praise. Hallelujah. We are so thankful today, God, of your goodness. Amen. Jesus, Amen. Jesus, Jesus. Can you say in Jesus' name? In Jesus' name. I love Amen. that name, don't you? Amen. So much power in that name. Right. Sometimes I, I wonder, do I really know how much power is in that name? Right. I begin to say that name. Jesus, over everything, anything. Yes, amen. Amen. If trouble comes my way, right. Jesus' name. Father, I need you right now. I need you in my room. I need you in this house. I need you in my work. I need you everywhere I go. I need you in my car. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So good to call out his name. Yes, love that. Amen. Salvation in that name. Hallelujah. Send back the comforter in that name. Amen. In the name of Jesus. My Father's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that I know who he is. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Amen. You know, it's not hard. Some people say, oh, no, I, there, there's three. I go, I, you know, I, I care to differ, you know, but... Hallelujah. I'm glad that God opened up his word yes. to me and you. 
I know who he is. He yes. broke himself in flesh. That's Amen. Right. That's right. Ah, good God. That's Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Amen. We take your request today. Hallelujah. God is here to answer prayer today. Yes. be if they would only go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Uh, too much trying to leave Amen. him out. Right. Trying to do it themselves. We, we try to do too much ourselves when we, we could have went to the Lord in prayer oh, Amen. that whole time and he took care of it. Right. He fights my battle. He fights our battles. He said he would. Amen. Lord, I can't do it. I'm not able. I can't fix it. I can't fix what that is. But God, I know that you can. I know that without a doubt. His word says so. And we've had many miracles. And we've had many miracles and wonders in our own lives. Amen. And around about us. And you think about it. Right. Name them one by one. Oh, all the miracles and wonders that God has done in our lives. Oh, amen. Anyone else? Yes, Sister Sandra. Just all of my family. Yes. Continue to pray for Cody and Linda. Okay. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Like not Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Jeff. Um, continue to pray for um, my mom and dad. Sister Chester this week um, we got word Friday that um, he passed away Thursday afternoon and they're going to be having the funeral this Wednesday so just just pray for their family That's right. it's a great loss, tremendous friend of ours and, um, yes. and uh, I know he was so ready to go home um, oh. he just he had told many people he's preached this, preached heaven for years and yeah. Talk about heaven and yes. he was excited. Amen. And Don't he you had know. such an opportunity to minister to many doctors and nurses over right. the last couple of weeks. Oh, and wow. just pray that a lot of the seeds that he planted will bear right. fruit. Oh, oh man. yes, they um, will. Be in prayer for their church, for for their family. Um, also, um, Sister Connie contacted me this morning. They are down a, a vehicle and weren't able to come this morning. Mm. So she asked for prayer for that. Sister Gwen got in touch with me and her mom's not doing well this morning. So she said they wouldn't be able to make it today. So be a prayer for them and for Sister Jenny. Um, That's right. I believe Brother Gary Bryant, um, they switched some medication on him and he's having a hard time with it. So this morning. Amen. And, um, let's remember Sister Ann. She's she called my husband just before church and really not doing well. And just pray God's will. Um, I know yeah. she's she has nobody really to be with her. Her um, and apparently hospital. 
hospice doesn't keep somebody there all the time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just pray, pray God will comfort her and be with right. her. Comfort her, Jesus. Keep the touch of her body. Um, mm -hmm. Have some special unspoken. So continue to pray for our, Jamie and her children. Um, maybe that God will change her work schedule and that she doesn't have to work on Sundays and can be here. And just many in need of pray for the prodigals. Um, pray prayers for, I believe it's Lawton, Oklahoma area. I saw um, some news reports last night. Horrendous wildfire going on there. And um, so many areas with the you know the drought um, wildfire start or or um, a big threat. Um, they're yes. telling people I guess here local a couple of um, trucks pulling hay. The hay has combusted just driving down the road. Um, and you wow. know things are dry and hot. <laughs> so. Um, Thank the Lord for the rain. Uh, but That's right. Be in prayer for, I believe it's Kentucky and also the St. Louis, um, Missouri area where our UPC headquarters used to be housed. Um, they've had horrible flooding there. And um, I, I believe there's been some lives lost. So be in prayer for that too. And let's remember Brother Buller, a former pastor in New was only given a couple weeks to live. He's been in poor health, so we'll be in prayer for him as well. Amen. Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Uh, please remember my daughter, Amber. We talked a little bit more to her caseworker, and uh, the ball's starting to get rolling, and they're starting to work things out, so let's pray for God's direction and help there. Right. Uh, Sister Patricia really needs our prayers. Uh, they put her on hospice and didn't give her, give her a lot of time. So uh, let's hold Sister Patricia Brown up in prayer, if you would. And Same. those that I work with, God will help us be a light and witness there and guide us there. That's right. Just amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother amen. Gary wasn't feeling well this morning. He requested prayer. All right. Gary Bryant. So thankful for the Lord today. Um, I was thinking about, I say last week, um, my grandson had COVID, and uh, after dinner, I guess we had, then I went on home, and uh, they were all there, and um, he didn't start getting sick until later there, and I said, well, he's not feeling well. Let's take his temperature, and and all that and so he had 103 temperature we had one of those test kits and um, he had COVID uh, show positive so they were loading up and everything and so uh, I said well let's have prayer I want to pray for you Nathaniel I want to pray over you I said let's all pray Amen. and uh, you know because every one of us that's uh, I'm talking about my granddaughter my grandbabies my uh, my wife uh, Kim uh, Gary, Jennifer, uh, the mother, dad, every one of us had been, it was all around him, and the mother and dad was transporting him back and forth. It was in the car with him over all day, and 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 back over to our house, and then back home, and um, uh, and so they got home, and uh, but needless to say, let's say we, we we all pray. <laughs> let's pray. Amen. Yeah, you know, there's power in prayer. Yes, amen. And I said. I just want to pray over you. Let's pray. And so we just start praying. I said, God, protect us. Shield us. Shield every one of us. You know, Nathaniel was sick, but let's lift him up. Lord, take care of the fever and uh, and, and and help us. We're, we're all exposed here. Every, every one of us uh, uh, was exposed there. And so they load him up and then take him home. And my granddaughter had just gotten over that COVID that week and really bad for we, we prayed for her and we couldn't breathe she was really having a hard time breathing so about four days 
there she had it really bad. And so now I'm back in your kitchen. I can't, I do not want to have it again. She was just hysterical. I cannot go through this again. Again, my babies had it. And, and, and they were real sick. And they were all just really sick. And we, right. we prayed right. for them. And of course, I wasn't exposed to them then. And uh, so it's been a week. You see, seven days now. And uh, so Nathaniel gets back home. And and and, and what? His fever goes. Lower. Away. Yeah. They check him though again for the COVID and took the test. And they had another test there. Yeah, and so it shows positive still. Uh, next day, so I mean, he was really sick, feeling terrible. And, and next day, he's fine. Just feeling good. He's fine. Fever, no fever. Test him again for COVID, no COVID. So the COVID's gone. So this was only two days. Third day he was doing this, I mean, really good. Not a one of us got COVID. Already, my, my son, daughter, another, my, my grandson, the grandson that's with them, not, not, not a one of us, Regina, none, none, none of us got COVID. Amen. That's what I was talking about the shield of the Lord, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, that the Lord will protect you and you pray over the sick and they shall recover. I believe it and I know it's so and it's true. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. All the unspoken requests this morning, amen, by lifting up your hands. If you feel like standing with me right now, let's stand, amen, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, many are Lord. sick, many are out. You know them, you remember the cause, you know our families. Hallelujah, call them out. God knows every one of them. God knows the problems. God knows the sickness right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands towards heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love right now, God. We thank you for your joy. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. Hallelujah for your word right now. We thank you, Jesus, for your comfort, God. We thank you for your power. We thank you for the Holy Ghost and your power, your overcoming power this morning. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for touching our family, God. Thank you, God, for lifting them up, Lord, for your shelter, your, your hand that's on them right now. Your presence that's in this place, God. Hallelujah. You know each and every heart. You know each and every mind right now, God. Hallelujah. You know our troubles and you know our times, God. Hallelujah. But you're you're a present help in time of trouble, God. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sweet Holy Ghost. Sweet Holy Ghost and power. Thank you, Lord. You know our mothers and our fathers, our sisters, our brothers right now. Amen. Jesus, Jesus. Undertaking their need, God. We pray, God, that you would just touch them right now. In Jesus' name. Lord, we lift you up every unspoken request, God. Hallelujah. We know that you know every name, God. You know those that were unable to be in the house of the Lord today. Bless them, God, in some way, God. Hallelujah. You know just what they need. Oh, they're lifting you up. And those that are lifting you up, they're sick right now, God. Oh, bless them, Lord Jesus. Bless them, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your shield. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Hallelujah. The hedge is built around, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 No sickness, no pain, no sorrow right now. Hallelujah. Oh, God. We thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your strength and joy. In the name of the Lord. 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 Oh, yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, our nation is God right now. Our president. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Touch this world. Let there be peace, God. We pray for peace in the name of the Lord. Oh, thank the Lord. 
thank you for lifting us up right now. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, those garments of heaviness. We feel that they are gone right now. Amen. What amazing. It's amazing. We're praising. We praise you. We worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Praise the Lord. I always like to read just a little bit. Hallelujah. God's so good. In Psalms chapter 5, I was reading that. I read several different places. And, and you know how you just ask the Lord, Lord, lead me. I want to be a good worship leader. Amen. Let me just be a good worship leader. Hallelujah. And you know what? It a good worship leader, if the people makes the worship leader look like he's so good. <laughs> Am I saying that right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Church is worship the Lord. I just stand up here praising God. Hallelujah. You know, that's easy. Amen. Amen. It's for the church. Right. Praise yes. God. Yes. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? That's so awesome. Man. Hallelujah. I do what I like to do. I just want to praise God. Amen. Worship the Lord. Amen. Maybe I'm going to bring a scripture because the thing where David always asked me, crying for the Lord. And help him in some way, and the Lord will help him. And then he comes and he says, Oh, the battle's right me again. You know, and, oh, oh, but he, then he's praising the Lord. And he's he goes, But he tells us just what to do Amen. because God has delivered him many times. But in Psalms chapter 5, uh, he says, Give ear unto my words, O Lord, and consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. Oh, I'm sure he's praying right now. Because, hallelujah. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning. Wasn't that great? That was great this morning. Yes. I was out praying and reading the word in this mist. Rain was kind of coming in. Felt nice and cool. O oh Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up, he said. Thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, and neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight, and thou hast all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing, and the Lord will harbor the bloody and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitudes of thy mercy, and in the fear will I worship toward the holy temple. Like we've done this morning, worship. Hallelujah. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. There's no faithfulness in, in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness, and their throat is an open separate cut. They flatter with their tongue. Right. In trouble again. again. Destroy thou them, O God. And, oh, we don't say that anymore. And, you know, I don't know. Don't destroy them. I don't even like that word, but, you know, Lord God, change their way. Change Amen. something about them. Let's make right. Help them, O God. Uh, you know, I pray, you know, that they not be lost because you know what? That what's going to happen to them when they're destroyed? You know, it's over. Right. Amen. God help them, Lord. Right. If there's someone that I come up and meet and see on the way, and they're not just real faithful, they don't look like they're doing just the right things. Right. And, and it seems like wickedness is in their heart or evil or uh, any such thing. God help them in the name of the Lord. Oh, I don't want to see them lost. No one. Now, even people in my family. God lift them up. Touch them some way, somehow. Help them in the name of Jesus. I don't want to see anybody lost because I know without a doubt what that is. What that's about. And, oh, and you don't want to go there. Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. But let all of those put their trust in thee <clears throat> rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. 
How many of you love that name? We spoke about that name in the name of Jesus this morning. In the name of Jesus, I love that name. How much joy is in that name today? How much strength is in that name today? For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor, and wilt thou compass him as with a shield. It's the Lord's shield, my family. Right. We're not all, don't point your finger at everybody, each, in each other, us right. and him. Right. We don't have time to be pointing. The accuser of the brother, the devil, the Satan's the accuser of the brother. Right. You're doing, yeah, you're doing this. No. God, lift us up, everyone, oh, Father. We don't all do everything just perfectly and upright and right. And then the devil's just ready to oh, accuse him. You're doing that wrong. You know, that's right. Help me to do what's right before the house of God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. That name that's above every name. The name of Jesus. Oh, my Savior. Hallelujah. Let's praise Him one more time. Let's just worship Him. Worship the Lord. Hallelujah. This is our opportunity today. Hallelujah. What a beautiful day that thou made, oh God. We rejoice and we are glad in it. I will bless the Lord at all times and in praise. Shall continually to be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Lord. Thank you, God, for healing today. Thank you for hearing and answering prayer. Thank you, God, for lifting those up, God, today that, that need a touch, God. Oh, in Jesus, Jesus' wonderful name. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. Brother James. Joy of the Holy Spirit. God, we just thank you, God, for an opportunity to be in your house today. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, that your prayer is your God. God, we ask the Lord that you just bless the offering today as we give. Bless it, Lord God. Reduce it and multiply it, God. We thank you for the tithes and offerings today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Brother Mike. Prayer focus. Can we get our name up there more? Hallelujah. 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 I'll tell you what, that is the strength and the anniversary and the birthday. In the name of Glory. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Birthdays and anniversaries, July 20th, Amber Gray. Keep her in prayer. Lord bless her. July the 23rd, Pastor Oak. Amen. You didn't have that birthday, didn't you? Yes, amen. <laughs> Glory. Y'all done had that anniversary too. That's right. Still smiling though. That's right. That big smile. He said that anniversary. Yeah. I'm glad y'all had a beautiful time. I'm glad to have y'all back. Oh, amen. In the house of the Lord with us. Amen. Uh, and Chandra Bowling. Amen. Uh, today, right? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, brother mine. A compass prayer, north, south, east, and west. Glory. Amen. Keep them up in prayer. Keep praying. That's what we need for each other. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, pray. All right, Brother Mike. Uh, Ladies Live Thursday at 9 a.m. Sister Joy in the Lord's house. Um, hey, we're going to get a surprise birthday party, too. <laughs> All right. That's glory. All right, Brother Mike. attention to me. All right, North Texas Summit 2022, August the 4th and 5th, uh, Thursday and Friday. Amen. Uh, it's going to be awesome, I'm sure, at 7.30 p.m. nightly, Plano Event Center. Uh, anyone needing rides, transportation, whatever, know y'all get that all together. Um, uh, brother uh, Sam Emery speaker there. Amen. All right. That is it, brother. Over. Glory.
Glory to God. Praise the Lord, everyone. Let's sing and praise the Lord together. Amen. Oh, how I need Jesus. Um, on the, um, if you're not able to go physically, um, I guess this uh, summit will be next Thursday and Friday night, or this coming Thursday and Friday night. If you're not able to go, um, I will um, get the information for the Facebook page for North Texas District. And they do uh, live video those services, so you can watch from home too. But if you can't go, it's always awesome in in service. You know, yeah. it's just um, it's good to hear online. But if you can be there, it's also really good too. So, but um, see me, and I'll write down um, or I'll text you whatever. Just uh, see me, and I'll get you the information for the North Texas District. Uh, Facebook page and they may even have it online too if you're not on Facebook they may just have it online as well so um, you can view the services that way Amen. Amen.
They got it all together. They got it wired and it's all taken care of. Bless you. It's not that way for the rest of us. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. I don't have it all together. I don't know it all. I don't have all the answers. Amen. amen. But the beauty of it is, is I do know who has that. And his name is Jesus. He knows the future. He knows the past. He knows right where you and I are right now. Amen. So what a friend to have. Amen. Because he doesn't want us to suffer needlessly. He has a purpose for everything and everyone. As Brother Gary said earlier, I believe every insect has a purpose in this world. Amen. And so does every person. If there's anything that I know about my God and I'm learning to respect immensely... God can do it all. He can do it all. Everything. But you know what he does? He likes to share everything that he does right. with his creation. And so he lets the bees share in a part of it. He lets the trees share in a part of it. He lets the grass share in a part of it. He lets every animal share in a part of it. He lets the creation share in a part of it. Everything is a part of, amen, the goodness Everything serves a purpose. And how much more is that so for you and I? Because even though all of this is important, none of it is as important to God as we are. Amen. And so many times we listen to the lies of the enemy when he tries to tell us, oh, you're nothing, you're no good, you're not accomplishing any good, I don't even know why you're here, blah, 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 blah. But I can tell you why you're here, because God has a purpose for you. God loves you, and God is using you. Now, how many bees know that God has called them to pollinate the world? They don't know that. That's their job. They just do it. It's natural. Amen. Because they're out getting honey. And as they're out getting honey, which goes back to the hive, which keeps the bees alive... They are picking up pollen all the way along and scattering it around and keeping all of our plants and flowers and trees and all of our fruits and vegetables and grass, everything growing healthily. And they don't even know they're doing it. Amen. Well, guess what we're doing? We're doing all kinds of things for the Lord as we go about our life, as we live our life. The beauty of this is, is that you can live life with purpose. You can choose to serve God. You can choose to honor God. Or you can choose to ignore Him and do your own thing. Now, I can tell you right now, you're not going to do much pollinating. You're not going to accomplish much. Right. Amen. Your life will not be very fruitful without God. Because you and I were created to do this in a partnership with Him. Amen. Amen. It's not within man to direct his own steps. Amen. We need God to direct our steps. Because He knows tomorrow. He knows what's needed. He knows how all the flowers need to be pollinated. Amen. And God has it all worked out. Praise the Lord. So if you know Jesus, you are ahead of the rest of the world. Amen. You have something that the rest of the world is missing. But that's all right because that's why you have Jesus. So that you can share him with the rest of the world. And so we're blessed, thankful, amen, and so glad that you could be here. We have many that are out. But the Lord knows that. Amen. Sickness and different things that people are struggling with. But you're here and the Lord is going to bless. We want to allow our class to be dismissed. Amen. We are so thankful for our young people. Amen. And we want them to be benefited by what God has made possible. Praise That's the right. Lord. For those that remain, I want to turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 54. We're going to open up with this verse.
verse. And if you're able to stand this morning in honor of the word of the Lord, we want to have you do that. Amen. Just for this initial reading, Isaiah 54 and 17. Stay there because we will go on to chapter 55. But I want to encourage us in the Lord today. I feel like the Holy Ghost wants to encourage us. Yeah. And uh, there were just there was just a vein in the Holy Ghost that I felt the Spirit ministering. And God's been dealing with me about this this week. And uh, we are blessed, so incredibly blessed. But in Isaiah 54 and verse 17, the writer Isaiah says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the saints or servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Wow. Yeah. What an incredible statement God is making through the prophet Isaiah about the servants of the Lord. Makes you want to be a servant of the Lord, doesn't it? Yes. Amen. I want to be a servant of the Lord. I want to know that there's no weapon that is formed against us that's going to prosper. I want to Amen. know that every tongue that will rise in judgment... We'll be able to stand against it. Amen. We'll be able to condemn it. And then to know that this is our heritage. This is God's promises to us. Amen. We have this to look forward to. We're not on our own. We're not by ourselves. Praise the Lord. Wow. Lord, we are thankful for this day, for this word. And I plead your blood over each heart today, Lord, that will hear this word. And those that will hear it in the future, perhaps, God, we're asking you to anoint it, to minister in our lives, and let us gain strength and be a strength to all those around us. And the church said, in Jesus' name, Jesus. amen. You may be seated. God bless you. I want to talk about the blessed of the Lord. Those that are blessed by God, or as it's stated here, the heritage of the Lord. Amen. A heritage is something that you inherit. You carry it on. It goes with you. You are blessed to be a part of it. Amen. And the blessed of the Lord. There, and I see this in so many levels in our world today. And it will always be a struggle. Has always been a struggle. And that is peace. Peace of heart. Peace of mind. Uh, our world today is troubled. And it's always been troubled. And, uh. I don't know. I can't say that it's getting worse. I just, maybe I'm just recognizing it more. Amen. The world around me. As I mature, I realize that there are consequences. And, uh, but then I see the saints of God. And this is where we can miss out. I see the saints of God, the ministry of God. I see them struggling and not having peace. And I mean, not being able to be content with where you're at. Somewhere in my phone, I, 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 copied a picture that I saw of a brick wall and growing out of this brick wall is like this little beautiful flower. I mean, it is just a beautiful little flower and, uh, and it's so out of place and yet it is so beautiful. It is just, it's an incredible thing to see. And, uh, and that's what we are in this world. We don't fit in this world. It's not like this world was made for the place where we, you know, but if you bloom where you're planted, if you learn to accept where you are and thrive, amen, take advantage of what God has given you. God has to give you the nutrients, the moisture, whatever you need to, to grow. But if you will just thrive where you're at, you will bring so much joy and happiness to those around you. You will make the world you live in such a more beautiful place. And actually the fact that you are in such an unusual place it will make you stand out and be so beautiful. Amen. Because that little flower was so beautiful. It, it stood out. It was so vibrant. It was so awesome. Amen. And it added so much to that brick wall. Amen. And yet that little flower could go around depressed, feeling so bummed out because it has no other flowers around it. It's not in a beautiful field. It's not in the midst of a bunch of other flowers and and so on. Amen. And sometimes it's that way for us in the world that we live in. We get so focused on the fact that it's not the way that we think we want it. But 
let me give you a clue. You know where you're planted at? Where God planted you. <laughs> okay. Right. This is the part you don't want to hear. Amen. You're right where God wants you. Amen. Now, I'm not going to tell you that you won't be moved or that God won't change things or that things can't be changed. Amen. Because they can and many times are. But you can enjoy or thrive where you are. Hallelujah. You can do well right where you're at if you focus on him yes. and his promises yes. and be what he wants you to be. And I'm sharing this because there's someone my wife and I love immensely and they, they are very dissatisfied with where they are in life. And they're in a beautiful place. Amen. Amen. They, they're in a place where they can thrive and do well and be blessed. And yet they are in constant turmoil because things aren't the way they want it. They want something that they can't have right now. Now, could they have it later on? More than likely. But right now, they're where they are. And that's not going to change immediately. And so they are so discouraged and so disheartened by... Their condition, that brick wall is just killing them. Amen. And so it's very hard for them to thrive and enjoy where God has put them and what God is doing in their lives. Not realizing perhaps how much joy they are bringing to others, how much of a blessing they can be to others, how beautiful they can make the world where they live appear because they're there. Simply because they're there. Amen. And... This is exactly what Satan wants, and it is our carnal nature to be negative. We are negative by fault. Amen. We are born in sin. Sin is negativity. That's where everything that can go wrong will, and there's it's going to happen to me. Amen. But I can tell you this, that the more that we surrender to him, the more we can find the beauty in where we are at. Let me give you an incredible little tidbit that really brightened my day. Our dear brother, Brother Chester, the minister is passing away or has passed away. But before he passed away, he's in the hospital bed and, and his life is fading quickly. And his uh, wife and uh, her brother is there and I don't know who else was there. And just to give you a glimpse at Brother Chester's, he's not planted where he wants to be. He's in a hospital, he's hooked up to tubes, and he's given just days, maybe weeks to live, okay? So mentally, you would think, this is not where I want to be. I should be depressed, I should be discouraged, I should be in a bad state of mind, I shouldn't be thankful, I shouldn't, you know, I shouldn't have to cheer or encourage anybody, right? And so he's laying there in bed, and his eyes are closed, and his brother-in-law is just about 10 feet away. And man, he sneezes. <gasps> brother Chester opens his eyes and said, Tim, I was just about to cross over. And you brought me back. <laughs> he said, I was about to step on the streets of gold. He said, and you sneezed? And next thing I know, I'm back here again. Oh. This is the heritage of the saints of God. We don't have to be miserable. We don't have to be depressed. We don't have to be discouraged. Amen. We have the victory. Brother Chester has been in that hospital bed now for a couple of weeks. And he has brought so much joy to every nurse, every doctor, everybody that has come in there. He has spoke so many words of encouragement and kindness. And of course, you know what they're doing? The same back. They're being kind to him. They're trying to give him whatever he needs, whatever he wants. They're trying to comfort him and encourage him. I have seen it the other way around. Where the one in the bed is miserable and they make everybody miserable that comes in contact with them. And the doctors and the nurses and everybody that's around them is really upset with them and doesn't want to help them and doesn't care about them because they are so miserable they make everybody else miserable because they are so focused on their misery they have no hope they have no joy they have no 
And, and he, Brother Chester is like, I can't walk right now. Do you realize that the first steps I take are going to be on streets of gold? Amen. He has so much to look forward to. He said, I've been preaching this message all my life. 40, 50 years. He said, man, I'm fixing to go where I've been looking for all my life. Right. He had no reason to be downhearted, discouraged, or worried, or depressed. Amen. The worst thing that bothered him was that he was going to be leaving his bride behind that he's been married to for 48 years. And he knew she was going to struggle. And that was hard. But hey, she's not far behind. Hey Amen. Nobody's going to live here forever. We're going somewhere, church. And with that, we have so much to look forward to. Now look at it from the Lord's perspective. We just read how that the heritage of the, of the servants of the Lord is so awesome. The enemy cannot prevail against us. Amen. That when we stand before the throne of God, everyone that tries to condemn us will not be able to. Right. Amen. Because... That we have been what God wanted us to be. Our righteousness that we can produce means nothing. But if you are trying to live and be what God wants you to be, that righteousness will stand forever. It will stand in judgment. And when we are in judgment and people try to condemn us, our righteousness, the fact that we have tried to be what God wanted us to be, will stand for us. And they won't be able to condemn us. Amen. Glory. God will stand for us. Glory. In Isaiah 55, in verse 1, the Lord says, Ho, listen, every one of them that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. Yes. He that hath no money, come ye and buy. Eat, yea, come buy wine, milk, without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? And you labor for that which satisfieth not. Hearken, listen diligently unto me. Eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Yes. The Lord is challenging us here to pursue those things in life that truly have value. Right. We're so busy trying to get food and clothes and cars and houses, working night and day. Mad at everybody that's getting in our way and preventing us from getting that food or those clothes or those houses. And in the process, missing what really matters. Living for God, trusting God, and letting God direct our paths. When we invest our lives in Him, in Matthew 6.33, He says to us that all these things do the Gentiles seek. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Amen. And his righteousness yes. and all this stuff, and I'm paraphrasing it, will be provided. God will take care of you. That's right. And we can go through life so upset because of everybody who's getting in our way and make everybody around us so miserable as we climb on them to get to where we want to go. When the key to this is to seek God, his righteousness, try to be what God wants us to be, live the way God wants us to live. And in doing that, he'll provide what we need and we can enjoy a journey, a life that is absolutely amazing. Verse 3, incline your ear, listen and come unto me, hear and your soul shall live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Mm -hmm. David was placed where he is at for an example to us to show us how that God can direct us. Look at what David went through as a young man. What he experienced as a young man shepherding the sheep, the bear, and the lion that he was forced to fight and God gave him the ability to overcome, prepared him for Goliath when he was come in contact with that situation and he was able to stand up against Goliath which brought victory and jealousy. King Saul became exceedingly jealous, attacked and turned on David, tried his best to kill him. David fled for his life. David's an example to us. Yeah. Amen. 
And David went through a lot. But David always trusted God. Always put God first. Always tried to do what God wanted. And God provided. God protected. Amen. And even when he messed up, he acknowledged he needed God. And he had to do what pleased God. And he repented. And he turned his heart over to God. And God was able to keep him. God was able to work through him. Amen. And we see the sure mercies. Amen. We see that the hand of God remained on him through all of his life, even though he didn't do everything perfect. And what, an, what a story for you and I, because that's us. We're not going to do everything perfect in life. Amen. We're just, all we can do is try to please God and trust God. And we're going to have to fight some lions and bears and giants. Yes. We're going to have to deal with some discouragement, people that hate us and things that don't go our way. But ultimately, Look at what God did. God set him up in the kingdom. God provided for him. God protected him. God blessed him. God used him. Yes, and all of Israel was blessed immensely because of him. When the kingdom is handed over to Solomon, his son, they have no enemies. David's taken care of him. God's done it through him. Amen. They are wealthy. They are healthy. They are wise because David has been a godly leader and has encouraged all the people to serve God and put God first. And God's blessings yes. are all over the land. Amen. Amen. David. God's telling you here. Look at David. Because I want to do that in your life. I want to do that in everyone's lives. Amen. Amen. Verse 5. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. This, God is going to bless Israel through other nations. And what he's telling you and I here is, is that I'm going to bless you through others. When we try to honor God, we try to trust God, we try to serve God, we try to be what God wants us to be, even though it's not easy, God will bring others into our life and they will be a blessing to us. They will be an encouragement to us. Amen? Amen. And we will find strength through others because God will bring them to us in our time of need. And this is awesome to watch in God. And I've seen God do this in my life, so I speak from experience. I have seen God provide miracles, bless me with other people and their abilities, their kindness, their generosity when I needed it the most. Yes. Amen. Amen. This is the heritage of those that love the Lord. He says in verse 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Amen. Let the wicked forsake his way, the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Amen. Wow. Talking to Sammy this morning, amen, trying to tell him the value of words. He said he was sorry. And I said, That's awesome. But I said, That word, it's only a word. Amen. It means nothing if you don't follow through with actions. Because whatever you're sorry for means you're not going to do that again. <laughs> Amen. But if you turn around and you do it again, then you have just made yourself a liar because that's a lie. You say, I'm sorry, but then you go right around and do it again. You're not sorry. Amen. The value of those words is meaningless. And so it is with repentance. That's why it's so vital that we turn our lives over to the Lord, not just our words. Amen. It's easy to say, I love God. I think you can probably talk to anybody in the world just about and say, oh, I love God. Now, I don't know who he is or what and all. You know, but, oh, yeah, well, I'm definitely going to love God. You bet I love God. Uh, who is he? Amen. They don't even know who he is most of the time. Or the one that they're serving is really not God. Okay? But look at their life and look at how they're living. Are they living according to God's word, the Bible? Because this is God's word. And it guides us on our journey. And if we are living according to God's word, then as he said in verse 17 of chapter 54, 
This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. In other words, they're doing what I've told them to do. And I'm going to bless them, and I'm going to stand by them. What an incredible blessing. Verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Oh. So what I thought God wanted is not important. What the word of God tells me to do is important. How easy is it us for us to turn God's word to where we do what we want to do instead of what God tells us to do? Oh, I thought that's what God meant. Because <laughs> that's what I wanted. Amen. It's not about us. It's about him. What does God want? God wants us to love each other. God wants to be a blessing where we're planted. God wants us to be a help and a strength to others. Is that easy? Oh, no, because they may be walking on you. Amen. But you still be a blessing to them. Amen. Humility is the fragrance that the flower leaves on the heel that just crushed it. Amen. Even though they stepped on us, we made their world better. We made them happier. We made them better even though they took advantage of us. Because we know, you know who provides for us? You know who heals us? You know who resurrects us? Yes. God does. Amen. He didn't tell us to try to do them in for it. He didn't tell us to be mad and carry a grudge the rest of our life. He told us to pray for them if they despitefully use us. Amen. He told us to love them. That's what he told us to do. But that is not what we want to do. That is not what we feel like doing. Amen? So we find doing God's word, being what God wants us to be, it's not the way we think. Because that's not the way I think. My thought is thorns. I'm, they are going to pay for this. Amen? I'm going I'm to, yeah. Wow. He said, my ways are higher than yours. Amen? His thoughts are higher than ours. Verse 10. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from the heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. So you want to bloom, you want to grow, you want to be healthy, you want to be blessed, Live by the word of God. It's that simple. Amen. Amen. Take the word of God into your life. That's the reign of God. Let that reign fall in your heart. Let that reign nourish your thoughts in your life and your intentions in this world. Because if God's word is in your heart, you will prosper. You will grow. You will become what God wants you to be. Amen. He said it's going to happen. He's ordained it. It's going to happen. When it doesn't happen is when we don't have the word of God in our heart. When we're not trying to live according to what God wants us to be. And we're directing our own steps. We're being who we want to be. We're taking care of this world on our own. We don't need anybody to tell us how to do it. We're going to tell everybody else how it's done. Amen. It's two different worlds there. And we don't realize it many times unless we are surrendering ourselves to him. And the more I surrender myself to him, the more I realize why people around me struggle so much. Amen. Because it's not within man to direct their own steps. I don't know everything that's going on in this world. I don't know who's evil and I don't know who's good. I have evil people that are acting like they're good. They look good. Amen. And I'm but then there's other people who are evil that are going to repent and turn from their wickedness and be good. And I don't know that either. And I want to treat them evil. And all the time, God is trying to help them to find that place where they can turn good. Right. Amen. And here I come along and all I want to do is throw dirt in their eyes and face and, and step all over them because they're being so ugly. When what they really need is some love, compassion, and mercy prayer. Amen. Yes. I can't pick who's going to be making it and who's not going to be making it. It's not my job. 
He knows. Matter of fact, he knows if you or I are going to make it. You know, there are many that have stood in this position in the pulpit and have ministered to people and they're going to find themselves in hell because they missed it. They may have started out well, but then they veered off the path and they got away from God's word and they got into their own self and their world became their world instead of God's world and they missed the mark. And then there are others that they have been condemned by people in the pulpit who humble themselves and find a place of repentance, surrender their hearts to the Lord, and God fills them with the Holy Ghost and changes their lives. And they wind up in heaven. Amen. Isn't it ironic? And so it's very important that we work out our own salvation you and I, with fear and trembling. Just because I'm standing here doesn't guarantee that I've got it all made. Doesn't mean I can't fall. Amen. And just because you may have made a really big blunder in your life doesn't mean you're not going to make it. Because God can heal, change, forgive, deliver. Hallelujah. Amen. He loves to do that. It's amazing what he can do when we yield ourselves to him. Wow. Goodness. Verse 12. For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you in singing. All the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree. And instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. To those that turn to the Lord. Yes. That's what he's saying. Verse 50, chapter 55 and 1 starts out. Everyone that's thirsty. Everybody that's hungry. Everybody that's struggling. Turn to me. If we will turn our attention and our life to him. He'll take the brokenness. He'll take everything that's in our world. And he will somehow turn it out to good. And give us a life that's worth living a light that we can be excited about. A light that we can rejoice in. Because first of all, we know that this flesh is like the grass. This grass out here just a month ago was real pretty green. And now it's turning dry and brown. And Amen. This rain may revive it a little bit. But it's going to die. And so are we. You're not going to escape that. But if you can live for God, if I can live for God... He has promised us. <laughs> and his promises are yea and amen. amen. God knows what he has promised. He is absolutely amazing and incredible. I love him so much for what he has promised. Isaiah 59, and I believe it's verse 19. Because we're going to face struggles in this world, God will fight our battles. 59 and 19, he says, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Yes. Amen. God will provide. God will protect. We have to trust in him. Amen. And I am so thankful in this world that I live in that it's not up to me. Amen. And the longer I serve him, I have to adopt what Brother Chesser preached and lived out in his last days. I know my Redeemer lives. Amen. And I know he has prepared good things. And I am so excited and anxious to see what he has prepared. Matthew 11 and verse 28, Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God knows who we are. We are clay. We are fragile. Amen. But he's saying it will surrender our weaknesses and our insecurities to him. He will bless us. He will take care of us. 
He will direct us. He will do incredible things through us that are absolutely amazing. This scripture in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 is written, and it's so powerful. Challenging us to trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3 and verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. So we really don't have a reason to complain. We really don't have a reason to be discouraged. We really don't have a reason to go through life miserable if we know his word, if we know him. Because we know he has a purpose for our lives. And even if our life is hard, amen, we can be beautiful. We can be a blessing. We are here to be a light. We are salt. We are to add flavor to the world around us. Amen. Yes, amen. Brother Chesser is walking on streets of gold right now. Glory. He is walking with Jesus. Another minister friend of mine, Brother Perry, which was responsible for building this building. Amen. When he passed away at his home, very similar to Brother Chesser, he was laying in bed there. He didn't want to die because of his wife. He knew she'd be left behind. She'd be miserable. And finally, she told him, she says, go ahead. She said, I'll be fine. I'll be, I'll do all right. And, and he looked around and he says, ah, oh, this is a beautiful place. And then he looked up and he goes, well, hello, Lord. Amen. He looked at everybody, waved at him, and he was gone. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Hallelujah. God loves you. God has prepared great things for you. Not because you're perfect, not because I'm perfect. Because he loves us. And because we're trying in our humble way, to be what his word oh tells us to be. Oh now, life sometimes gets a hold of us and just drags us along, and we're like in a wild, raging river, grabbing whatever we can and doing whatever we can to get through life. But somewhere in that journey, we see the word of God, and we go, oh, that's what I need. We let go of whatever we're holding on to, and we swim for the word of God, and we hold on to the word of God for dear life. Because we know that's what's going to get us to the, through this and to the other side. Living for God is immense. It is amazing. It provides us with everything we need if we can trust him. Amen. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. He will direct your paths. This is the heritage. This is the promise. This is the hope. We are in an absolutely beautiful place, even if we can't see it. <laughs> I'm looking over and I'm going, eh, bricks. This is nasty. <laughs> Amen. But I look up and I go, oh, God, that's so beautiful. And I flourish in a very difficult situation and bring so much joy to those around me because I'm accepting where God planted me and being what God wanted me to be, just as you, and the world is a beautiful place. Yes. Let's thank you. Lord, we are blessed, privileged, thankful. Lord, your word enriches us. God, you have given us exceeding great and precious promises. And Lord, we are comforted as we dig into the word of the Lord and as we find your great love and preparation for us. God, it makes us want to trust you more, lean on you more, and realize this journey is worth it. Amen. The sacrifices will be more than worth it. Oh, yeah. And that whatever we leave behind, we really didn't want anyway. Whatever we turn away from, for your sake, God, you will bless us tenfold. Yes. God, we rejoice in your hand, a rejoice. blessing upon our lives, and the future that you have promised those that are humbling themselves yes, and submitting to your will. And God, we plead your blood over each one that hears this. Let your word grow in our heart. Let the joy of the Lord it, it, let it just grow. Let it be a beautiful thing that flourishes in our lives, God, and brings hope and healing to all that are around us. And, Lord, we're going to give you all the praise. 
In Jesus' name, the church said amen. amen. Let's clap our hands and thank you for his goodness. Thank you, Lord. Your blessings are immense. And we are rich today. In the knowledge.